Good morning, this is your friend, Pastor Barry Shaw, or Brother Barry Shaw, whichever you feel more comfortable with. I'm here again to give you a message from the Lord, and uh, we hope that the message from the Lord, which God gave to me, will minister to your heart in a special way, because the Word is powerful, quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It is able to discern the thoughts and the intents of your heart. That's how powerful God's Word is. Anyway, my message today is entitled, Are You Connecting to the True Vine? Connectado ka ba sa tenud, anay ga bagon. That's what my message is today. And we're going to start out with a verse found in John 15, verse 1 and 2, which says, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. No fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes it so that it will be even more fruitful. Let's start. Let's open in prayer this morning. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Bless this word to everybody that is here. Minister to their needs. Show them what you want them to know. And help them to grow closer to you. Through the power of the word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, point number one: Jesus is the true vine. Because it says in John 15:1, as I just mentioned to you, as I just read, "I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener." So, Jesus is the true vine, but there is only one true vine. There's no. There's lots of vines in this world. Different vines. There's only one true vine, and that is Jesus Christ. In John 14, 6, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is telling you that there's only one way to know God. There's only one way to heaven. There's only one way to have a good life, and that is connected to the true vine. And uh, the true vine comes from the Father. We're going to talk more about that today. There are many false vines. There are many false belief systems that people believe in or live for or love to love, love, and they follow this very closely. I'll give you a couple of examples here. Sports. Sports. You can become, can, you can become so involved in sports that it means nothing in the, in when it comes to eternal and he can kill the eternal life. I know a guy that he was so involved with sports, he could tell you every baseball player, every team, and, and sometimes every, 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 uh, what they, what they, what they won by, I know, every score. He was so involved with sports. That's all he talked about was sports. That's called a false vine. Entertainment. Many people are, love entertainment of any kind. There's a girl in America called Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift is a beautiful girl, and she sings, uh, and she doesn't have hardly any clothes on, but she has a great big drawing. Everywhere she goes, people are drawn to her because she's such a good singer. That's not really good to be doing it. How about money? Money. People are drawn to money. Money can become a false vibe. You know what the Bible says about money? Money, the love of money is the root of all evil. So don't get so involved with money, you forget about the Lord Jesus Christ. Gambling. There are so many people that love to gamble. In the, in the, in the Philippines here, there is a sport which I never understood called cockfighting. A lot of men like to, like to go to cockfights. And uh, so there are many things Internet, the um, internet, such as uh, Facebook or TikTok, a lot of young people love the internet. It draws them away from the Lord. All these things the devil uses to draw people away from God because they are false vines. One other thing I'll talk to you about is TV. Do you like to watch TV? I know people who are glued to the TV. Uh, day and night, they like to watch TV. It keeps them away from God. Those are called false minds. Anything you prefer to do, 
anything you prefer or anyone you prefer to be with more than Christ, more than Jesus, is a false lie. Oh, we are not ignorant, by the way, the Bible says, of the devil's devices. He has many devices and he will do anything to draw us away from Jesus. Anything at all. So, what you got to do is seek first. Matthew 6.33 Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness above all things. Sports, entertainment, money, gambling, religion, internet, education, TV. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things that you prefer to have will be added unto you. Make sure you're attached to the right line. Okay? So only Jesus is the true vine. You know why? Because only Jesus can do this. Only Jesus can, number one, forgive you of all your sins. There's no uh, religion, no person, nothing that for can forgive you of all your sins. Only one person can forgive you, Jesus. How come he can forgive you? Because he died to pay the price for your sins. So that's number one. Only Jesus can do that. That's why we need to put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ. Only Jesus can deliver you from all of your afflictions. No matter what you're going through, no matter what kind of a problem you're having, uh, and, uh, or whatever kind of a, of a uh, uh, storm you're going through, only Jesus can deliver you from all of your afflictions. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, listen to me, the Lord delivers them from them all. Only Jesus can do that. Only Jesus can heal your diseases. Many people have diseases, and Jesus can heal you of many diseases. Only Jesus can defeat the enemy in any battle you go through. Only Jesus. And lastly, and most importantly, only Jesus can take you to heaven for eternity. No other religion, no other vine, no other belief system can take you to heaven. Only he can take you to heaven. That's it. Only Jesus can do that. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. That's what it means to have Jesus as a true vine in your life. So, there's only one true vine, and it says that his father is the gardener. That's the next section in line here. Jesus is the true vine. There's only one true vine, and his father is the gardener. A gardener will do all that he can to make the plant and the tree more productive. He will make sure there's enough sunlight. He will make sure there's enough water. He'll make sure that he pulls all the weeds. He'll make sure that if there's fertilizer, they will help. He'll get fertilizer. The gardener will do everything that his mind can think of to make sure that all the plants in his garden will grow and become more, more productive. John 15, 8 says this. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. So God the Father likes to see his people bearing fruit for being fruitful in the kingdom that's what he wants to do and he expects people to be fruitful as you grow closer to him you will become more and more fruitful our father will do all that he can to make us fruitful more productive this is what he gives us to be able to make us fruitful and more productive for him number one he gives us his word. The word is quick and powerful. But in Psalm 119, 11 says, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. That's how powerful his word is. That it keeps, if you keep his word in your heart, if you study God's word and you meditate in God's word, and you even, even have God uh, memorize God's word, you will have it in your heart. And if you have it in your heart, you will not sin against God because you are very uh, resourceful and productive because of his God and his holy word. Number two, what else does he give us? 
he gives us his Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. That's God living in us. He's our Comforter. He's our guide. So he gives us his Holy Spirit. You bring all things to remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. When James, I'm sorry, when Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John wrote their books, they were remembering things that the Holy Spirit taught them to be able to write them down, to be able to make sure that they're writing the truth and nothing but the truth. The truth shall set you free. What is the truth? The truth is God's holy word. It will set you free from anything that is causing you to go astray from sin, temptation. So he gives us, the Father gives us his word. The Father gives us the Holy Spirit. What else? The Father gives us his wisdom. His wisdom. James 1 5. What does that say? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that gives all men liberally and it shall be given him. He gives us his wisdom. You need wisdom today? Ask God and God will give you his wisdom. Okay? And not only does he give us his word, his Holy Spirit, his wisdom. Number three. Number four. He gives us his mercy. He gives us his grace. He gives us forgiveness of all the time. He is one willing to forgive us of anything we've ever done. His mercy. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. He wants to forgive you, but you must ask him to. And lastly, he gives us his power. He has power to give us, to help us. In 2 Corinthians 10, 4, For the, wage, the weapons of our wherefore are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Okay? So God the Father has many things to give us to help us to grow and become more like him, more productive and more fruitful. So, number one, Jesus is the true vine. Point number two, unproductive branches. John 15, 2, the main scripture I read in the beginning, he cuts off every branch in me, in me that bears no fruit. You know there are branches in, in, in the, uh, every branch in me. There are branches that are productive and there are branches that are not productive. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are now become new. When you have Jesus as your Lord, everything changes. Everything changes. You begin to do things that you never did before because now you are a child of the Lord. Did you know that as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. You're actually a son or a daughter of God. You're actually God's children when you have Jesus in your heart, when the Holy Spirit is inside of you. In Revelation 3.20 it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him. He will come inside of you. That's what he wants to do. Jesus wants to live inside of you. And he does using by his Holy Spirit that's within you all the time. So, that's what happens. You are a new creature. Jesus is living inside of you. But every branch in me, it says, will be cut off. The ones that don't show any kind of fruit. In America, I had a friend... I, had, I didn't have a friend, I had a tomato ranch. Okay? I grew tomatoes. Big, juicy tomatoes. There's a tomato in America, I've never seen it in the Philippines. It's called a beefsteak tomato. You know how large a beefsteak tomato is? I'm not kidding, they're that large. You have to tie the, you have to tie the, 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 uh, the, the plant on a stick or all the tomatoes will fall down, sag and fall onto the ground. But, a beefsteak tomato has three branches coming out of one branch and it turns into three. One to three. 
okay? Now what's different about this? This one here will be productive. This is always the case. This one here will also be productive. The one in the middle will not produce anything. They call that a sucker. So what I would do, I would look for the suckers and I would tear them off. Why? Because it's not going to bear any fruit. I know it ahead of time. They just never bear fruit. So if you tear off the sucker, that gives more, more, more juice uh, for the other vines to grow more and produce more fruit. So the, ex the Lord expects everyone to be fruitful, and he'll do everything in his power to make you fruitful. But not everybody is fruitful. Let me give you an example, the, power of the, 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 the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower. He would sower the seed, would throw the seed, and sometimes seed would end up on stony ground. And the seed that ended up on stony ground, it would, it would grow real fast. It would actually grow. But whenever the sun came up and became very hot, and because that, uh, that the, the plant did not bear much fruit, it couldn't, there's all stone or rock, it would wither away. So the stony ground means the person receives the word with joy. They get saved and give their heart to the Lord. And, uh, but the problem is, there's not much soil. You know why there's not much soil? They don't spend any time in the word of God. There's not much soil in their heart, okay? Not much word. And they believe for a while, truly believe for a while, but when they become, uh, anything happens that are bad, go through a trial, go through problems, they fall away because they are not growing in the Lord. Spend very little time in God's Word. Almost no time. That's what happens. And then there is what's known as the thorns. Some of, the, some of these uh, seeds end up in thorns. And the thorns choke the seed and choke the Word and so that it becomes unfruitful. Okay? What does that mean in our life? Some people are they're choked by life's worries, by riches, by pleasures. They take more time out of, out of a person's life than studying God's Word. They want to have fun. They're worried all the time. They want to have riches, and they don't spend much time in God's Word. So what happens to them? They get cut off because they bear no fruit, because they don't have God's Word inside of them. Okay? God expects us to be fruitful. Okay? Romans 11.22. Listen to this one. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fell, the Jews which fell. They didn't, they didn't believe in God so much. Severity. But toward you, goodness. If, 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 if you continue in his goodness. Otherwise, you also shall be cut off. So we've got to continue in his love word. We've got to continue in his mercy. And we've got to continue to be in prayer. We've got to continue to have God's word abiding in us. That's what it is. So, point number one. Jesus is, the true, is a true vine. Point number two. There are unproductive branches. And the unproductive branches will be cut off. Not by me, not by the pastor, not by your mother or father. They'll be cut off by the Lord Jesus Christ because he knows they are not truly believers. Point number three, productive branches. John 15, 2 says, And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Every branch that it produces, he purges it. Okay? Luke 8, 15. But the seed on the good soil, good soil, stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word of God, retain it, remember it, keep it in your heart. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. They retain the word of God. They keep it there. And, by, and by, because they keep it there, they begin to grow a large crop. James 1.22 But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So, not only must you read God's word, study God's word, have God's word in your heart, 
You must do what it says to be a productive believer. Do what it says all the time. And then if you do that, it says that he, pur oh, he purges it or prunes it to produce more fruit. Sometimes the Lord cuts you way back. It doesn't remove you from the vine, but sometimes the Lord cuts you way back from what you were doing, and it seems like there's nothing there. We have a friend in Jack in, in America, and he had a rose bush. Great, big, beautiful rose bush. It grew pink roses. Very beautiful, very fruitful, very nice rose bush. But in America, where I live, the, the winter time came. And when winter came, snow, ice, everything died. It looked like it died, but what happens is all the sap leaves the, the top and goes into the ground. And it looks like everything's died. The, the leaves and the trees all die, everything did. Well, you know what Jack does before winter comes? He takes his clippers and he starts pruning back that whole rock, that whole real beautiful bush with rose bush. You know how far back he grows? He cuts it. He cuts it back to that big. It was great. It was huge. But he cuts it back to that big off the ground. Proves it all the way back to almost nothing. And you know what happens when the um, spring comes? When it begins to get warm and the things start to grow? That rose bush becomes more fruitful than you saw ever before. Even more fruitful. Why? Because it was pruned back. Some biblical examples of how God cut people back a little bit was one was Joseph in the Old Testament. Joseph was the was uh, the five favorite son because he was the youngest, and his father bought him a uh, new robe, many colors. His other brothers didn't get that, but he was a favorite son, so he was uh, he was treated better than the rest. But the the brothers were very uh, jealous of him and they waited for a time when they could get even with him because he was so anyway Joseph was given a a, uh, a calling from God a vision from God you might call it. God said to Joseph when he was a very young boy he said someday someday uh, he had a dream that the sun the moon and all the stars bowed down before him. And his father and his mother and his brothers, they all knew what that meant. They meant, that meant that they were all going to bow down before him someday. And that made the, the, the brothers even more jealous. So at a convenient time, when his father sent Joseph to, sent Joseph to find out where the brothers were all at, he had no idea, and he took them some food, the brother said, let's kill him. But one of them said, no, let's just get rid of him. Send him down to Egypt. So they saw a bunch of people going by, and they took him and sold him to be a slave. He was a favorite son. Now he became a slave. He became a slave to a person who didn't even care for him in Egypt because he was an Israelite, where people didn't like, didn't like the Jews at all. So he was a slave. And he didn't have any any, uh, any rights at all. But you know what Joseph did? He was resourceful. He says, I am not going to be upset. I'm going to be the best slave that master ever heard. And he did the job greatly. And the, and the boss said, you know, I don't have to worry about a thing. I'm just going to give all my things to Joseph and he'll take care of them all. And he did. He did a good job. Only the problem was he had, the man had a a wife that wanted Joseph because he was a good-looking man. She was uh, she was not very ha happy. She was wanting to have other people, other men in her life. But Joseph wouldn't do it. He knew it was wrong. He knew it was wrong to commit adultery. He said, "I'm not going to. I'm not going to give in to you. My master trusts me with his everything, his money, everything." So what did that woman do? She grabbed Joseph's coat, went to the master, and said, "said." This man grabbed me and tried to have sex with me. She lied because Joseph wouldn't give in to her. And the master took Joseph and threw him in jail. Now when a 
Jewish slave goes to jail, there is no way out. You're in jail till the day you die. But Joseph was a believer. He believed God would sometimes, somehow, some way, bless his word to him. He was holding on to that promise that someday his family would bow down to him. How is that going to happen? Only God knew. Only God knows. So if you have a problem in your life, you don't know how to fix it. Give your life to Jesus. Tell him about your problem. And God will bless you in his own way. He is a God of miracles. A God of miracles. So, Joseph was the best prisoner. The, the prison guard, he, he gave everything to Joseph into his hands. And Joseph was a model prisoner. But he was holding it. And then one day a baker and a butler went to, went to prison. They had dreams. They didn't know what the dreams meant. But Joseph interpreted their dreams. One was to be cut, and the other one was to go back to his, get back to his job again. And the, the dreams came true. But they forgot about Joseph. Until one day, Pharaoh, the king, the ruler of uh, the most powerful man on earth at the time, had a dream. And it was this terrible dream. It bothered him. And he wanted all the wise men, the magicians, and everybody to interpret the dream. But the, the, the wise men and the, and, the, and the magicians, he didn't tell them the dream. He says, I'm not going to tell you the dream. I want you to tell me the dream and give me the interpretation. Nobody could do it. So he was ready to kill them all, except the baker, the one that Joseph answered his dream. He said to Pharaoh, you know what? There's a, there's a Jewish slave in jail. His name is Joseph. He can interpret your dream. He can tell you a dream. He's very wise. So he said, bring him forth. So they brought Joseph forth. He said, I want you to tell me my dream and tell me what it means. And Joseph told him his dream. Seven fat cows came out of the river. Fat cows. And then right after that, seven very skinny, lean cows came up out of the water and ate the fat cows and so that now there was nothing left but lean cows. And he gave another interpretation. So he said, he said to Joseph, you are now second in command. And he said the meaning of that, the meaning of that was that you're going to have seven years of plenty Plenty, bumper crops, grain, everything. But it's going to be followed by seven years of famine. What you need to do is get somebody that's going to store that grain so that it'll be plenty to give everybody when it goes to the town. So he put him in second control. And the, then when the famine came, his brother and his father, they had, no, they had nothing. They heard there was plenty of food in Egypt. So they went down to Egypt to live. And what, guess what? They all bowed down to Joseph. I have another, a lot of other examples. I'll just tell you one more. Jesus on the cross. Jesus on the cross. Jesus was the, 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 the everybody wanted to go after Jesus. They all followed him. Why? Because he raised the dead. He uh, made the blind to see. The deaf could hear. The uh, lame could walk. He healed everyone. He was the most popular man on earth. Everybody was after him, wanted to be healed, wanted to hear him tell the stories. He told stories about the kingdom of God. But the Jews hated him. And they, you know why they hated him? They were jealous. They were jealous. And they took that man of God, who was the most popular man on earth, and they sent him to the cross to die. He lost everything. He lost his... And even his disciples ran away from him. Nobody was there beside him. He went from like a king to a, to a terrible uh, person who was paying a crime for the worst kind of uh, life a person could live. He had it all, but he was pruned all the way back. But he knew what was going to happen. He knew that in three days he was going to raise from the dead. And God raised him from the dead three days later. And now he sits King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He was pruned back, and now he is flourishing as the King of the Lord. And he is, why did he go to the cross? To pay the price for our sins and, and, and yours too.
Now, Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call unto me, and I will answer you, and show you great and mighty things which you know not. That's what Jesus can do. You're going through a trial, you're going through a problem. Call unto Jesus, and he will answer you, and he will show you great and mighty things which you know not, and he will get you through your trial, whatever it is. He knows how, and he knows how to help things before they even happen. Wait on the Lord, it says. Psalm 27, 14. Wait on the Lord while you're going through a problem, and be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord, and he shall strengthen your heart. So, three questions I have for you today. Number one, are you connected to the vine? If not, why not? Turn to Jesus and turn to him today. Question number two, if you're connected, are you bearing fruit? Maybe you're uh, being pruned back, okay? You stopped reading the word, so you need to repent and ask God to help you to grow and, and start bearing fruit again. Number three, if you're bearing fruit, do you feel like you've been cut off? Well, don't worry, be patient. He has something bigger. He has something better for you. Just be patient, and he will help you see the answer to your question. So, that's the end of my message. Let me close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Help us, O oh Lord, to be connected to the true vine. Help us, O oh Lord, to uh, keep following you, even though we're being pruned. And help us, O oh Lord, to know you as our Lord, Savior, and Master. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.